When our father disowned us, I couldn't believe what I was hearing. It wasn't until much later that his words began to sink in, that I began to feel the weight of what it meant. Do you remember when the decision was made to come to Charlien? Graha said that the Forum was determined to keep us in the dark, and that Father's venomous performance was part of that strategy, to keep us at arm's length. Perhaps it was. Father argued with Grandfather on many occasions, but never with such dismissive contempt. And when he demanded what justifies the sacrifices we make in war, I honestly didn't know what to say. Neither did Alpha know, I know, but never for one moment did I believe we had made the wrong choice. So all I could do was fume silently. It was only afterwards that I realized how childish I had been, how being stubborn and self-righteous must run in the family. If I could have just mustered a civil response, then things might have turned out differently. They must be ferrying goods to Labyrinthos. A vast complex beneath the island. Charlian is famous for archiving knowledge from around the world. Well, that knowledge is not preserved exclusively in dusty tomes and desiccated samples. Our living library, comprised of all manner of flora and fauna, is housed and studied within that underground facility. Still, that did seem to be an unusually large shipment. When I lived here, it was rare to even see such cargo transported by boat. Wait, didn't you hear something in the last stand about the gleaners coming and going more than usual? Well, I think they're the ones we saw manning those boats. And gleaners answer to the forum. If the appearance of the Telophoroi prompted this sudden burst of activity, then Labyrinthos may hold a clue as to what the forum is planning.
Deep beneath the scholar's city shines a false sun within a fabricated sky. In any age exist those who consider the floor an extension of their bookshelves, and this vault's architects surely belonged to that special breed. If the stack grows too high, start a new one. If no room remains, then make more rooms. A simple solution at first, and then bit by bit, a profound transformation. Knowledge buried beneath knowledge, a growing, creeping labyrinth from which there is no escape. Not what you expected. I must admit, the artifice is very convincing. But I assure you that we are beneath Charlian itself. The breeze you feel, the flowing waters you hear, all created by the hand of man. The island is volcanic, you see, and once upon a time this great hollow must have been a reservoir for magma. It was discovered some 400 years ago, at which point it was repurposed as a storage facility for scrolls and samples and such. Renovations have continued, with nigh on no interruption to this day, with the lower levels still undergoing expansion. Aren't those people gleaners? Aye, judging by their dress. They are said to work alone as a rule, but would seem that rule is being enthusiastically broken today. It may be as you suspected, that they are engaged in a task apart from the norm. Let's spread out and get some answers then. Did you call to me just now? No. How odd. I must be a bit dizzy from the descent. I I'll be fine, I'm sure. Let's get to work, shall we?
fair shot. Nicely done. Let me trust this one up, and I'll make my way over to you. There you are. Any new revelations? So you met with that gleaner again, this time to capture a hornbill. I understand catching and bringing in creatures from the outside, but what's the point of chasing after ones already here? Oh, it's a simple thing, really. Occasionally, we remove specimens no longer needed for study, or those we've had difficulty raising. But we can't simply turn them loose. Safely returning such creatures to their native habitats is another facet of a cleaner's duties. But not in this case, I'm afraid. I've been asked to bring the bird below. The restricted section in the lower levels of Labyrinthos. Open only to a select few researchers hand-picked by the Forum. The projects down there are the subject of rumor and hearsay. Forbidden magics. Advanced technologies that can never be allowed to fall into outside hands. Even Archons are not privy to the truth. Those who are, the researchers involved in this secretive work are not permitted to walk freely in the city, and are instead required to live in isolated quarters. What could a facility subject to such strict security protocols possibly need with a hornbill? An... an experiment? Possibly. I wasn't afforded an explanation. But... Judging by the requisition list given to me and my colleagues, I doubt it's for any kind of advanced research. I'd be more inclined to believe we were making preparations to migrate to the south. Mericidia or thereabouts. What? Why would you say that? Much of the flora and fauna we were asked to procure could serve as reliable sources of sustenance. They're comparatively hardy species, too able to endure harsh climates. And among them are specimens known to be effective in improving soil quality and purifying water. When you put it that way, migration does sound like a reasonable assumption. That's all it is, though. An assumption. Through our tasks, we gleaners glimpse only bits and pieces of the forum's plans. Our prime concern is that our requisitions be they living or otherwise, are properly preserved for the knowledge of future generations. Now, I really must be going. I regret that I cannot reward you as you deserve. Perhaps you might reward us after a fashion then. It is imperative that we reach the lower levels. And seeing as you are already set to descend with your assigned cargo, mayhap we could accompany you as your... assistants. I'm afraid that won't be possible. Once the animals have been prepared for transport, we send them down separately via the lift. I will of course follow after to make my report, but I can hardly pass you off as porters when there's nothing left to carry. Indeed. Pray forget I said anything. How do you feel about climbing? If you've strength and the courage to brave it, then there is another way down. This path leads to the 33rd facet, a mine shaft excavated during one of our expansions of Labyrinthos. While I cannot guarantee that the passage is safe to traverse, it should provide access to the meteor circuit below. 
I never even knew such a place existed. Thank you. This is the perfect solution. You're quite welcome. But consider yourselves warned. If the going proves too treacherous, you do well to turn back. I bid you good day. Well, turning back is hardly an option, not when we've come this far. Let's go and take a look at this mine shaft.
Hard to look away, isn't it? But they're more than pretty flowers. Heart blooms are attuned to ambient emotion. <sighs> you don't seem convinced, but believe me, it's true. This ashen grey, for instance, it mirrors the anxiety and urgency of those working nearby as they rush to fulfill sudden orders. Intense feelings like those spur the petals to change color. Bright glowing hues in the presence of joy, dark subdued shades for frustration or despair. Yet even with the collected wisdom of Charlian at our disposal, we've yet to identify the underlying principle of this empathic effect. And there are other mysteries besides. Although the flower is extraordinarily long-lived, its low reproductive rate has made it difficult to find younger populations growing in the wild. With too few sightings to map its distribution, and no closely related species to track, we've been unable to pinpoint its land of origin. <laughs> to further complicate matters, Every culture, even dimly aware of its existence, has given it a different name and mythos. Our attempts to study it via the historical record have been an exercise in frustration. As an avid botanist myself, I should one day like to unravel the heart bloom's secrets. But I'm afraid other duties must take precedence. I will leave you to your thoughts. Have you learned aught of interest? A flower that reacts to one's feelings? Strange. I must say, I have never heard of such a thing. This is all very fascinating. But as it stands, we fail to gain any significant insight into the forum's undertaking. Indeed. While there is certainly enough activity to support Erinville's supposition that a priority has been placed on improving food production, and fortunately for our investigation, these workers were never informed as to how their duties serve the master plan. <sighs> if only we could interrogate the forum members directly. Isn't that the entrance to the Archaea? Look, there! I think that's Erinville. A little difficult to tell from here, but, but I think you're right. He did say he was coming down to make his report. Erinville receives his orders from the Forum. Would it not follow, then? that the superior to whom he reports is a forum member, or at least a close associate. You mean to eavesdrop on their conversation? <laughs> what of the risks? Ours alone to bear. We won't interfere with Erinville's work, nor will he be implicated as an accomplice. If you're not comfortable taking part, I can do this alone. Nay. I said myself that I wished to know Father's intentions, and no answers will be forthcoming should we simply ask nicely. We can apologize later, should it come to it. 
Right now, we need every crumb of information we can get our hands on. Consequences be damned. It might be best if you came along as well. In fact, we should all... Cryle? Hmm? Oh, yes. That certainly sounds like a plan. I'm glad you agree. Quickly! Erinville is on the move. We need to get closer before we lose him. reach you. I trust you will find your compensation to be more than satisfactory. We wish to make clear that we are pleased with the efficiency and thoroughness of your work. So much so that we have come bearing new tasks in need of your competent hand. Another lengthy list. If I may speak frankly, 
The cleaners have been pushed to the point of collapse by your unending demands. We are not familiars to be exploited. We are Charlian scholars and we deserve an explanation for this unseemly treatment. What warrants such urgency? In an age long past, Charlian was charged with a momentous duty. And now that word of the final days hangs heavy in the air, the time has come for us to fulfill that charge. I can say no more, but I promise you this. All will be revealed in due course. And when it has, you will understand that your toil was in service to the greatest good. Then I will do your bidding, for now. But unless you wish the cleaners to rise up in protest, I advise you to offer tangible improvements for our working conditions. Your promised revelation does nothing to address present circumstances. A fair point. Your concerns will be conveyed to the Forum. I hope that was informative. You may consider my debt to you repaid in full. While I do have my reservations about the Forum, I want to believe that they have our best interests at heart. Which is why I'm reassured that you're busy sniffing out the truth of things. We can ill afford to place all our eggs in one basket, this master plan of theirs, without first understanding the risks involved. Wait! How did you know it was us? If you mean to impersonate a toad, try studying the real thing. And don't try to fool an expert. For you, the spell will keep it from wilting. She said you would need it for the journey ahead. Will you speak with her now? I cannot hope to match Minfilia's clarity, of course, but...
thank you. Do not worry. She has lent me her body for only a moment. Just as I could not save the first from the flood of light, it has become arduous for me to interact with the physical world without assistance. Though I might converse with you for a time, the incorporeal form I assumed on the ship would be incapable of casting even the simplest enchantment. It is in the depths of the ethereal sea, the place to which all life returns, where my influence is greatest. After Menphilia's sacrifice on the first, it was to the sea, here in the source, where I ferried her soul. I wished that gentle spirit to find rest in the world she loved so well. Her, and another who may yet have a part to play, though that will depend on you. Take the flower, walk free, for you are free to go where you wish, to believe what you will. That bloom will be your guide, test and proof of your conviction. In darkness, seek joy, surrender not to sadness, and see beyond despair. Walk free and bear the light for others to follow. Together, raise it aloft and let it shine till the end, blinding and radiant. brief. Already she seems so far away. Ah, <sighs> my apologies if I startled you. Ever since we began our descent into Labyrinthos, I had sensed another's will, straining to reach out. Even with my particular talents, though, I was unable to make a connection at first, so weak and tenuous it was. Once I took hold of that wispy thread, imagine my surprise to discover it was Heidelin herself. Needless to say, it seemed wise to learn what we could before letting go. Her answers were more cryptic than I would have liked. But at least she left us with a guide of sorts, that unusual flower. <laughs> yes, we are definitely making progress. You can't be serious! We've done nothing wrong! What business has the Forum with us? Obstruction and suppression, apparently. Mistress Baldessian, our records show you facilitated the Scion's entrance into Charlian by claiming them as assistants for your organization. We are aware of your investigations. After alerting the major institutions to the presence of potential troublemakers, we received word from an Archean custodian. A group operating under the auspices of the students, skulking about Labyrinthos and engaging in clandestine behavior. Clandestine? We may not have entered Charlie and Scions, but we did naught to conceal our identities. Our only purpose in this city is to seek the truth. I can think of no reason why our actions should warrant the Forum's intervention. It is not our way to discourage the pursuit of knowledge, but the timing of such pursuits must be considered 
not to mention their potential impact. With the world in chaos, we, the true caretakers of wisdom, have committed ourselves to an undertaking that demands the utmost discretion. And we will not risk its success by turning a blind eye to disruptive foreign elements in our midst. What then is to be our fate? Will you put us on a ship back to Eorzea? The Forum will convene to examine your case. The results of said inquiry will determine your future in this city. As for your absent companion, he has already been detained. Graha! But why? Is reading a crime now, too? Reading is encouraged, celebrated even. Not, however, of the volumes shelved in the restricted section of the library. Refusing to comply will only make matters worse. Let us instead treat this as an opportunity to open a dialogue with the Forum. Silence is often one's best defense. I would advise against prolonging the proceedings with frivolous discourse. But enough. This is not the place for debate. The Rostra await. Forgive me. I was careless. We would have been detained regardless. This way, at least, we managed to stay together. I trust your time within the Forbidden Archives was well spent. The Forum will come to order! This inquiry is now in session. As Speaker-elect, I will be presiding over the day's proceedings. Master Fortuno, would you be so kind as to restate the matter which compelled you to summon your colleagues with such urgency? As you are all aware, we recently denied Eorzea's request for Charlian assistance. Since then, Certain individuals dissatisfied with our decision have taken it upon themselves to interfere with our work. They entered our nation masquerading as associates of the students of Baldessian. But these malcontents are better known as the Scions of the Seventh Dawn. These militants wield influence with both the Eorzean and Eastern alliances and are inextricably involved with the crises presently afflicting the world at large. Loose in our city, these warmongers sought to meddle with and expose matters of state secret. What are they if not a dire threat to be expelled? You have tarnished the good name of the students. Galuf would be ashamed. Galuf Baldessian was never one to forsake his fellow man. Even if this nation closed every door and retreated from the world, he would have found a way to help the Scions, help every soul of this star fight back against the coming doom.
A terrible enemy stands poised to lay waste to all we hold dear. In the face of such madness, Eorzea reached out to Charlian, a respected ally, in the hopes of forming a united front. Was your curt dismissal truly the best you could offer? Or are you so preoccupied with your momentous duty of an age long past that even the end of the world is unworthy of your attention? Whence came this revelation? From the mouth of a forum member within fortuitous earshot. Then it seems your findings support my own. The reason I visited the restricted shelves was to study records of the forum's policy-making process. To better understand the historical trends underlying their most major decisions. At first glance, the positions of neutrality in war and the accumulation of knowledge above all else appear constant and consistent, the unchanging pillars of Charlian society. And once upon a time, I might have left it at that. These days, however, I am more attuned to the subtleties of governance, and so I noticed something... odd. From a particular point in time, the purpose of these policies shifted. No longer was knowledge preserved for the benefit of society. Rather, society was to be gradually reshaped to ensure the preservation of knowledge. The most conspicuous and telling change was the one which befell Labyrinthos. Once little more than an oversized storehouse, an enormous allocation of funds saw it transformed into an advanced research and archival facility. I also discovered a fascinating account on the finances of our Dravanian colony. The settlement attracted students from far and wide, and the connections and tuition fees thus acquired were funneled into further improvements for the archives. Now, there is no question that our nation's progress is tied to the acquisition of wisdom. Nevertheless, the vast resources diverted for this purpose borders on the obscene. But returning to the matter of when, our change in course appears to have been made some 270 years ago. The very same period when Charlian scholars in the hinterlands began a formal study of the ethereal sea. You found something, did you not? And whatever it was, gave rise to your oh-so-important duty. Mind your tongue, Archon. If you had seen... Yes, we are bound by a duty we cannot ignore. Knowing this, what would you have us do? Abandon our vital work and join you on the field of battle? We will never choose the way of the sword. We will fulfill our mission, not through strife and bloodshed, but survival. Come what may, we shall live on. We must. Do as you must, then. But we Scions will fight until the heavens fall, until our last breath. Such misguided zeal. Father, I... Master Fortuno. 
I fail to understand the stance you have elected to take. But by the same token, I have yet to find a compelling argument to counter the challenge you put to us in Gradania. Still, in the midst of my uncertainty, I must trust in myself to do what is right, as others have chosen to trust in me. So I will continue, as I always have, weighing the consequences of my every action, and allowing my hope for the future to inform my decisions. That's quite enough. Have you all forgotten the reason for this assembly? Skolok Montesheim. He's the head of the studium and an old friend of my grandfather's. Honestly, every discussion devolves into some interminable debate. Terrible habit. Let's return to the topic at hand, hmm? By their own admission, these Scions have resolved to fight alongside the Eorzean nations against the doom which Swift approaches. For there exists no evidence of an attempt to incite our citizens to do the same. Furthermore, while our decision may well have been the correct one, we cannot simply bull our way through these disagreements without inviting doubts or objections. Put yourselves in their place. Who among you would leave a tome unopened if an elder forbid you read it with no reason given? No. If we're to quell further discontent, then we must conclude this matter with a fair and even hand. Order! We will have order! Master Montesheyne raises some valid points. Keeping such concerns in mind, I propose we enforce the following measures. Until further notice, the students of Baldessian are to cease any and all activities within the domain of Charlian. You will also refrain from any further investigation into the Forum's decisions and duties. Failure to comply with these restrictions will result in the immediate expulsion of your Scion associates. Let us put this judgment to a vote. All in favor, raise your hand. I count 51 for and 48 against. The proposal is passed. Students, Scions, you have heard the Forum's judgment. Pray abide by it, or face the consequences. Honoured members, I thank you for your time. This inquiry is concluded.
Welcome, Welcome home, home, my, my lady. lady. What? What are you gawping at? Oh, I... I suppose I never gave the day call much thought. I'm glad that you approve, I think. Lord Fortuneau is not to hear of this visit. And I should also like the children to have their gifts, ere my husband makes his return. As you wish, my lady. Master Alphno, Mistress Alice, if you'd accompany me upstairs, we shan't be long. The twins have been sending letters home from time to time, recounting their latest adventures. I am sure they withhold certain details, of course, if only to keep me from worrying. Yet a mother worries all the same. In the early days especially, I tried to support them as best I could, sending the Scions coin and other such donations. Fortunately, they have found the strength to overcome adversity time and time again. Their words grow more confident with every letter, their depictions more vivid. The triumphs and defeats, the joys and sorrows, it is clear that they have come to find value in every experience. But of those they treasure most, it would seem that meeting you might be the most impactful. Why, since that fateful day, I do believe there has not been a single missive in which you were not mentioned by name. <laughs> it is plain they care for you. And I am glad they have such a steadfast companion watching over them. Under normal circumstances, I would offer you tea, but alas, these are anything but. In any event, why don't you keep me company whilst we await my children's return? Perhaps you might regale me with a tale or two of your exploits. When you mentioned gifts, I wasn't sure what to expect. Mother, I... Oh, look how well it fits you. And the style is to your liking. It's perfect. Exactly what I would have chosen. But please, tell me you had something different made for Alphano. Naturally. You are hardly little children anymore. And while I shall miss dressing you in those precious matching outfits, I must respect the individuals you have grown to become. See for yourself. Thank you for the splendid clothes, Mother. Stylish, comfortable, and eminently practical. I am so glad you like them. They are, however, missing one final touch.
if you would allow me, Master Alphano. Wait. Are these... A sage's tools of the trade. They belonged to your father. Though he may as well be chained to his desk these days. As a student, he was often called upon to venture into the field. He wielded those armaments, both to heal and to harm in no few battles. None so fierce as those you two have braved, perhaps, but battles nonetheless. Thus did I pull them out of storage, to show you that he was not always the man who stands in vehement opposition to you now. <laughs> And also because it would be a terrible waste of ridiculously expensive House Leveilleur commissioned artistry. I am told these devices are quite difficult to master. But someone of your extensive experience should soon have them darting about with grace and aplomb. May the wisdom in that crystal serve you well. And please, try to find common ground with your father, that you might come and go without need for this awful subterfuge. We will, Mother. I promise. My final gifts to you, before you run off, are an observation and a suggestion. Firstly, Fortuno has ever been a serious man, but it was only after you were born that he truly lost himself in his work. I may not know the forum's inner workings, but I know your father's. The timing of that change in him holds some significance. Secondly, do not seek to best your father with words. Far better that you simply show him. Let him discover the merit of your actions, after they cannot be undone. <laughs> oh, mother. We shall take your wisdom to heart. Thank you again for these gifts, and farewell for now. Safe travels, my children. Eat well, stay warm, and keep your friends close. <laughs>